Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Villanova Football Signing Day show. I'm Steve Pannone. I'm joined by head coach Mark Ferrante. And coach, you're bringing a class of 13 players here in this early signing date, five on offense, eight on defense. You guys coming off a really good year, <clears throat> nine wins, four losses. But the lifeblood of any program is recruiting and keeping quality players coming in. Let's talk a little bit about the 13 guys. Let's start on the offensive side. You know, do you feel you've filled the needs you needed to on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, first of all, I just want to thank our coaching staff for going out and doing a great job building relationships with these players and so on. A lot of these guys that have signed with us early here in December are guys we've probably met in their 10th grade year and obviously follow them through their junior year and so on. So we're real excited about the class we have coming in. Uh, a little lighter on the offensive side because we have a lot of guys coming back, a little heavier on the defensive side, but uh, we feel we targeted some positional needs that we uh, were looking for and our guys did a great job. Like I said, it's all about going out there, not only identifying who can play and not only identifying who the top students are, but also identifying guys that we think would fit what we're looking for, fit our program, fit Villanova. And it's all about relationship building and our staff does a great job. And then I want to thank also the high school coaches because without them, you know, they're, they're the guys that introduce the guys to us, the players to us, and the student athletes, uh, you know, themselves. We do a great job going out there. And, you know, our, our, our coaches have done a phenomenal job, you know, pounding the pavement and uh, building those relationships. And, you know, we feel real good about the 13 guys we have joining our program today. And you talk about pounding that pavement. There's obviously a couple of local kids that jump out at you right away, but there's also some kids from the south. Uh, another strong year in Maryland again as well. Just uh, you becoming a national program and getting kids from all over the country. Part of Villanova becoming a national university, and you guys are taking advantage of that. Yeah, no doubt. The the V, right? The the V is a brand that is far reaching, and you know basketball's on TV all the time, so that enhances everybody's degree when they graduate from Villanova. And uh, you know we go into Texas. We have another gentleman from Texas joining us this year, and we started going into Texas a little bit last year. Uh, we have a gentleman coming down from Rhode Island, so you know we hit the New England area and the Mid Atlantic and uh, you know the Northeastern region pretty hard, but then we we have an opportunity to go out and grab a Texas guy and last year we had a couple Atlanta guys and a Charlotte guy so you know um, the Villanova brand is is far reaching and nationwide so it gives us an opportunity to spread our wings a little bit but we always start in-house we always start in the uh, southeastern PA area and cover the five local counties really well and we're excited about the guys we got from there as well and, and this year's in, uh, not incoming but this year's freshman class a lot of those guys were forced to get on the field and see playing time. And uh, obviously, a lot of times it's uh, position related, it's uh, ability related, obviously, too. But um, from this group, are there some guys that can make an immediate impact? Everyone asks me that question. And in an ideal world, we'd like to redshirt as many freshmen as we can. However, history has shown us over the times that, you know, we don't have that 110 man roster, we don't have that 100 plus roster. So, we're going to have some freshmen that are going to help us. And someone in this group, I don't know how many, I don't know who, but someone in this group is going to probably touch the field next year. And the guys that usually do that are the, are the defensive backs, the, the tight end linebacker type guys, because they have the opportunities to get out there in special teams. You know, so um, sometimes it happens through injury. So as we looked at our running back position this year, you know, we had two guys go down. So D. Will and T.D. were our two freshmen that played pretty much half the season as the two rotating starters. So I'm always reluctant to say who it's going to be because you never really know. Uh, if someone comes in and they have an opportunity because they're that far advanced and they learn our system well enough and they're physically gifted enough to go out there and play, then that means we just got better. But we have a lot of guys coming back. So we're looking for these guys to add some depth, maybe get involved in special teams, but y you never know who. You never know who it's going to be. So I'm not going to target a guy from that perspective. I'm not going to put that pressure on them, but we're going to welcome them all and they're going to come in and compete and we're going to see who steps up. And Coach, not only is today signing day, but it's also the 10th anniversary of the national championship game. Uh, I know you have many memories of it. Give us a few. Well, the memory I have is just today because I got a text from Phil Matus out there at Ohio State, and he said, today Villanova football made history in winning the national championship 10 years ago. So, you know, I congratulated Phil. He was a captain on that team. Uh, but there's a lot of memories from that game, and, you know, one of the biggest memories is just the way the guys reacted and celebrated after the game. And, uh, you know, obviously Caesar made plays, and, you know, we ran the ball really well. And there's a lot of things that will jump out, but it's just watching the pure joy of that team and the guys celebrating with each other, uh, you know, after the game as they're, you know, holding up national championship trophies. So real excited about it. And you had an opportunity to have those guys back 10 years later this season. And 
it's got to be special for a coach, especially like yourself, who's been at Villanova such a long period of time, to see the kind of men they've grown into. You had them as, as young, young adults, grown into men, and now a lot of fathers and good husbands and a lot of good things going on with that group. It's got to make you feel special as a coach. Yeah, no, it was great to see those guys. We had a, a function for them right up here in the room we're sitting in right now with the night before the game, and uh, we had a really good turnout. I'm, I don't know what the total number was. I know some of the guys, like Phil, you know, he's at Ohio State, so he couldn't make it back because they have their own contest on the weekend and so on. But it was great to catch up with those guys. Caesar made it back. Whitney made it back. A lot of the guys, Barbaro and his family made it back. So uh, it was awesome to see those guys. And as you mentioned, they're all out there doing a lot of good, successful things and raising families of their own. So it's amazing how time flies. That was 10 years ago. And obviously these 13 young men that are joining your program today would love to leave with a memory like that in their careers here at Villanova. Yeah, we'd all like that one, Steve. <laughs> you know, we'd all love that. If these guys can help us get there, all, all, we'll all be happy. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be joined by offensive coordinator Chris Bowden when we come back from break. We'll talk about the five players coming in on the offensive side of the football after this short break here on Nova Nation All Access. Welcome back to the Villanova Football Signing Day show. I'm joined by offensive coordinator Chris Bowden. Chris, you guys had a really good year on, the, on your side of the football, averaging 37 points a game, over 450 yards per game. So I guess there's always room for improvement, but and obviously an outstanding uh, job by your guys this year, putting points up, moving the football, gaining yards. You guys had five players out of this recruiting class. And I guess like what a lot of often starts at quarterback, you guys bring in a local product, uh, Ricky Ortega out of Coatesville High School, Give us some quick thoughts on Ricky. Yeah, uh, Ricky had a tremendous high school career. Um, he put up uh, enormous numbers uh, over the course of his career. He's a winner. He's a great kid. He's a, a coach's uh, son, which is, you know, you always love to have. Um, but he, you know, he, he's a winner, number one. Uh, he reminds me not to put high expectations on him, but he, rem he reminds me of Flacco from Townsend, who's a, you know, who's a hell of a quarterback. So uh, we're very excited to get him, a very athletic kid, uh, accurate kid, and again, uh, above everything else, great character. He's a winner, um, and he gets it from the quarterback standpoint. But, uh, you know, in his production over the course of, uh, you know, his high school career, uh, it was really amazing. You know, we're, uh, you know, we really feel lucky to get him. And I guess you saw a lot of tape on him. You saw him throwing the ball, I guess, to pre Brian a lot. And you went out and said, we, we got to have this young man as well. So at the wide receiver position from Coatesville High School, you guys bring in a 5'9", 180-pound to pre Brian. Yeah, he was kind of a late, a late grab for us. Uh, scholarship opened up. And, you know, he was the first one we, we thought of. Uh, he's an explosive player. Uh, we're, we're, again, we're very excited to get him. Uh, we thought he was a great player. Um, and seeing him in person, uh, he's impressive. Uh, you know, he's going to play running back and receiver for us and kind of do everything. He was a kid that never came off the field in high school. Uh, he played offense, defense, special teams um, nonstop. So, uh, we're, we've, we, again, we feel really lucky to get him, and, uh, you know, he's going to fit in our offense right away. And, and the next young man, you, you lose Simon Big Ellis at tight end. You guys go down to the state of Texas. You bring in Mitchell, Mitchell Bothwell. From All Saints Episcopal School in Texas, 6'5", 230-pounder, you know, 46 receptions, 550 yards this year. Sounds like a real well-rounded tight end. Yeah, he, he's a big kid. He's an athletic kid. Uh, he's somewhat new to playing football. Uh, he was a basketball kid. Uh, his parents are, you know, have Northeast ties, so I know when Coach Devine went down there and recruited him, uh, you know, Villanova was definitely an option. When I saw his film the first time as an offensive staff, uh, my thought was we'll, we'll never have a chance at this kid, that he's going to blow up and – Coach Devine did a great job recruiting him, and uh, we're very, very excited to get him. I think he's going to help us in the pass game, the run game. I think he, you know, he has a chance to be a special player. And then you talk about uh, Coach Devine and the job he did on the offensive line this year with that young group, and he brings that that group back, and they were able to stay healthy and had an outstanding season for you. But you go up to Rhode Island, you bring in Jake Picard, you know, six foot three, two hundred eighty nine uh, pounds, first team All State player out of Rhode Island. Talk a little bit about Jake. Yeah, he's more more likely going to play guard, but I think he has the ability to play tackle. He's a, a big physical kid. 
we loved his film, uh, loved the kid, loved his parents when they came down last weekend and, and got to meet his whole family and spend time with them. Uh, you know, with the offensive line, you'd like him to develop, you'd like him to probably hopefully redshirt for a year and, uh, you know, build muscle and, and be ready to play, uh, not force him. But again, he, he looks physically ready to play. Um, and like I said, he's, he's a guy that's going to fit in probably a guard, um, possibly a tackle for us. And your next young man out of the uh, New York City, out of Queens, Temi Tope, you're a Jew, ah, two, two. I hope I got that right. And uh, fine young man, six foot four, 297 pounds, big strong kid, three year captain, obviously a leader in his program. Talk a little bit about Temi Topu. Yeah, Temi, uh, he came down, visited, and then he came to camp. And physically, he's extremely impressive. He's a kid that when we saw out there doing all the drills, uh, he, he looks the part right away. I think he was under recruited. I think we have a diamond in the rough with him. Um, I don't. I just think that, you know, Coach Jones found him and we recruited him hard and got him to commit early. Uh, again, I think he has a chance to be a really special kid. Uh, love his family. They were down here last week and, you know, very respectful people and they were, they were awesome. So, again, I, I love our whole kind of class that we have. I think we have a good blend of, of guys and, uh, you know, really guys that I think, you know, if we need him to step up right away, great. You know, hopefully we don't need that, but, um, you know, we're excited about him. Chris, you, you say it's a little bit, uh, Coach Ferrani mentioned, a little bit lighter on the offensive side, just based on needs and who graduated and who's coming back. But it sounds like you have five solid kids that can continue to uh, bring this forward, bring the program forward and continue it to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the you know, Mitchell Bothwell, I, I love him. You know, he is, I think he has a chance to be a real special tight end. The old lineman, we're really excited about him. You know, Ricky Ortega, obviously, uh, he's an exceptional quarterback. And then, you know, Dupree, Dupree Bryant. Uh, again, he just seeing him in person, he, he is an extremely impressive uh, athlete, and uh, you know he's going to fit in in a lot of different ways for us. Coach, congratulations on a great year on offense this year, and we wish you best of luck in the off season as you guys prepare for 2020. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the Villanova Football Signing Day show. I'm joined by defensive coordinator Ola Adams. And, Coach, you're bringing eight guys on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, we'll start with a young man from uh, Delaware County Christian School. An interesting story. He was playing eight-on-eight -eight football this year, I read mm -hmm. last night. So, obviously, comes from a little bit of a different – interesting to get your thought on how you break down a film on that level. But uh, it's Obina Wobadu, and he's welcomed in as 6'3", 282-pound defensive lineman. Talk a little bit about Obina. Um, our biggest uh, thing this off season was to try to get bigger up front. Um, and we invited Opina to camp. Uh, he did a great job at offensive lineman. Um, Coach Devine kind of hogged him from us a little bit, uh, <laughs> but we got a glimpse of his speed and athleticism. So through a live evaluation, he did a great job for us. Um, we think he can make an impact uh, immediately. Um, think it, he's a little bit raw. So we got to coach him up and work with him, but he's a nice piece of clay to be able to work with. Do you see him more over the nose or on the end in your defensive alignment, or you'll well, figure that out when you get him here? Um, we think he could play all three spots along the defensive line. Uh, so that's a huge benefit when you have a guy, you know, with a lot of versatility. Um, but with, with his athleticism, I think he can do anything we pretty much ask him to do. And then you get another defensive lineman from the state of Pennsylvania, Jake Green. Uh, six foot, 276 pounds from North Schuylkill Valley High School. Yep. Tell us a little bit about Jake. Um, Jake Green was a late get for us. Uh, we actually had an opportunity to live evaluate him also. Um, Jake is going to play interior defensive line for us. But for a defensive lineman, I would say he possesses a unique um, blend of athleticism because you're always looking for a guy with good size. But Jake's a pretty good athlete, actually played a little bit of fullback uh, this year for his team. So 
Um, Jake's a guy I think can make an instant impact for us. Uh, Obina I think is a little bit more of a raw guy we have to develop, but Jake should be able to step in and make an instant uh, impact for us. And then Jordan Nelson out of Palmerton High School in Palmerton, Pennsylvania. He's going to be at the linebacker position for you. Six foot two, 197 pounds, career 440 tackles. This mm -hmm. guy seems to be around the football an awful lot. Yep. Uh, the unique thing about uh, Jordan is the game is spreading out uh, in today's day and age. So you're always battling to try to get a little bit more athletic. Um, so our deal with Jordan is he, he's six two, he's long, just a little bit over 200 pounds now. We're going to try to pack some pounds on him uh, to just get him a little bit more girth. But uh, he's a physical kid, um, can play downhill. He's also great in space. Like I said, he could play safety. So I would say we're going to play around with it a little bit, play him a little bit at safety. But uh, for the most part, we're hoping he could develop into a nice sized linebacker that is take our defense uh, to another level as far as athleticism. Your next player, John Rodan, uh, out of Elkton, Maryland, Elkton High School. Your defensive back, you had a lot of young players get time in the defensive backfield this year. A lot of freshmen played a lot of minutes for you. He's 5'11", 166 pounds. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see eight interceptions, six touchdowns? Uh, talk us a little bit about John. Um, John is a diamond in the rough, I think. Not a lot of guys knew about John uh, during recruiting. But I remember when we popped this film up, we kind of lit up. You know, I think he's a natural cover corner. Um, I do expect him to make an immediate impact for us. Um, we also had an opportunity to live evaluate him at camp, and he was very explosive. Uh, the six touchdowns come on offense, so one thing you'll see with me as far as defensive backs go, I would like a guy that does play offense because the ball skills are there. Um, so not only will he make an interception, but he'll have an opportunity to turn an interception to a touchdown. So um, looking forward to what John can bring to us. I think he could be a great cover corner, a guy you could leave alone one-on-one. -on -one. And that's something that we'll need moving forward uh, once Jaquan Amos graduates. So I think it'll be a good opportunity for John to come in and learn from Jaquan while also being forced to play early. And you, and you like defensive backs out of Maryland. So you pick up another one in Ethan Potter out of Carville Academy, uh, in the, actually in Delaware, but grew up in Chesapeake mm -hmm. City, Maryland, 5'11", 192. Looks like an all-purpose kid. 31 touchdowns, 2,210 all-purpose yards. So you talk about you know, offense, playing some offense. 104 tackles, eight tackles for loss, so he can get into the backfield. Three interceptions. So it sounds like an all-around really good athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethan Potter uh, had an opportunity to evaluate him twice, uh, once at Temple's camp and once at ours. Potter ran about a 4-5 at our camp. Um, but he also, you know, he's over 190 pounds. So that's a very rare combination um, to get coming out of high school. Um, to your point, you know, I love the fact that he plays offense and how productive he is. Uh, he's, he's a really a limitless player. I think he could play any position on the football field. Um, he is also a guy um, who I'm expecting to make an immediate impact at safety for us. Um, I think he could play all three of our safety positions. And to be quite honest, I think he's athletic and fast enough to play corner if we really wanted him to. Um, but we're going to ask him to play safety for us and make an immediate impact. And then another D-back out of Maryland. So you got, you got that place surrounded pretty well. I know it's an area that you recruit personally, so mm -hmm. you got to feel good with some of the talent that's coming from the state of Maryland up to Villanova. Ty Trin out of Calvert Hall High School in Maryland, Owings Mills, 5'11", 182 pounds. Talk a little bit about Ty. Um, Ty, you know, we actually had an opportunity to evaluate also uh, live. Uh, to be quite honest with you, we had Ty, Potter, and John at the same camp. And uh, what strikes me about Ty is his versatility. Um, he's a really good cornerback. Um, we placed him at safety during camp, and he did a great job at that. Um, the thing that I love about Ty is he's also very smart. He processes information pretty well. Um, and his high school has a history of putting out uh, successful defensive backs. So I think he's coming in the most well coached. Um, but again, uh, versatility and being able to play all three safety positions is what I like about Ty. Um, I think he also does a great job in the return game also, which is something that you know we may ask him to do uh, if needed. So um, just the versatility of uh, the football instinct, 
uh, the pedigree that he brings to our program, I think he'll be able to make an immediate impact. And then a little bit closer to home, but staying in the defensive backfield, Terrell Mims, a local mm -hmm. kid out of Martin Luther King High School in Philadelphia, 5'10", 169 pounds, <coughs> excuse me, 17 interceptions and 90 tackles. Yep, uh, Terrell Mims, I've probably evaluated maybe six to seven times uh, at camps this summer. Um, the, the thing you like about Mims is he's a local kid, so anything that you think about Philadelphia, I would say he embodies. Uh, he, he's a tough kid, real competitive. Um, I think that's the thing that I like about him the most is he would go to every camp in the summer and just flat out look to compete. He always took the most reps out of any defensive back at the camp. Uh, so, so he's a guy that always uh, took initiative to get up front and compete. He's a great uh, cover corner. I think, you know, we like to play a lot of press man-to-man. -man. Uh, I think that fits his skill set pretty well. Um, just his competitiveness, uh, never say die attitude, I think is going to give him a chance to play here early. Um, staying home and local is something we always want to do. So being able to keep him home with all the other offers that he had, I, I think that's a big win for us. And to close out your unit, you go back to down the state of Maryland, you get a linebacker in Tim Ferguson, six foot two, 215 pounds. Another kid that looks like he can make plays in any part of the field, 148 tackles, 16.5 sacks, six interceptions, so good ball skills, 12 force fumbles, so he can mm -hmm. obviously hit. Sounds like an all around uh, pretty good linebacker. Yeah, the, the, the beauty about Tim Ferguson, uh, the thing that struck me when we first started recruiting him is he was actually a state champ in wrestling. And we had just brought in a state champ wrestler last year, Elijah Solomon. So that really struck a chord with us because we know what wrestling brings. It brings an element of toughness uh, that you really can't teach. Um, as you watch some of the plays on his highlight tape, some of the tackles kind of look like wrestling moves. Uh, but like I mentioned, as far as where the game's going, how it's spreading out. You need guys that could play in space. Um, I think Ferg could play inside the box if you need him to. He could play out in space. But what sets him apart is his pass rush ability. Um, he also rushes the passer pretty well. To stand out on a team that has the number one player in the nation uh, says something about you know the impact that you can make individually. So. You know, we're pretty excited um, about Ferguson, um, and he's excited to be here. So I think he'll be able to make an instant impact for us. The beauty about uh, us at linebacker is we have a lot of depth. So um, it's not a pressing need for him to play, um, but if he's ready uh, to step in, we'll find a way to use him. Well, it sounds like you have eight fine young men to work with coming in next year. Yes, sir. Uh, your, obviously, defense made great strides throughout the season. They were able to implement your style of play into the unit, and I'm sure bigger things coming year after year. Yes, sir. You know, I think uh, the biggest thing for us is just to build on this past year. Uh, we had a lot of young guys get some experience. Uh, so this spring's going to be huge for us, just being able to get back out there, get familiar with what we're running. Uh, being able to build off of last year and move forward uh, in the next year. Uh, once we add these recruits, I think it will give us the depth that we need because um, that was the biggest pressing issue, I would say, uh, towards the end of the season was just depth. So, you know, we're bringing in four defensive backs. Potentially, you know, we can increase that number also. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time. We'll take a quick break. We'll be joined by Coach Ferrante to wrap up the show. We'll be back with more on Nova Nation All Access after this. back to the Villanova Football Signing Day show. We're rejoined by head coach Mark Ferrante. Coach, we got to hear your coordinators talk about the 13 young men that your program just brought in today to be a part of the 2020 Wildcats. Obviously, they're talented football players. They're good students, or they wouldn't be at Villanova University. But what are some of those intangibles? Your team this year had such great chemistry and character 
that's obviously something that's very important to a football team. What are those, what are those attributes you're looking for in these young men? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. We go out all the time. We talk to these athletes when we're talking to them and their families and even their high school coaches. And, and we're really looking for – it's pretty simple formula. We're looking for someone who wants to go to a great school, get a great education, someone who wants to come and be the best football player, best athlete they can become through all the hard work that we want them to put in the weight room and in the offseason and so on. And, and then someone who just wants to be a good person, a good community guy. And these guys, you know, we want someone who wants to be here. And these guys, we've been involved with these guys for a long time. A lot of them have verbally committed months ago. And they, even though some other coaches probably reached out to them and, you know, those types of things through the recruiting process, especially when we got on the road in December during the contact period, you know, they had some other coaches trying to reach out to them at their homes and in their schools. But they stayed true to their commitment to Villanova. So we're real excited about this class. We're real excited about the fact that, yes, we want them. We want them to come here. We want them to be part of our program. But as much as we want them, they want us. And, and you get a sense of that when you're recruiting them and building those relationships. So um, that's what we're looking for, good students, good athletes, good people. And uh, that, that's what really made our team go this year. And, Coach, coming off an outstanding season, you guys end up 9-4, and four, uh, coming off an FCS playoff berth. Uh, but every coach talks, the spring's very important. And I guess talk about, you know, it's been a little bit different. This spring will be a little bit different than your first two where you guys were coming off those big Delaware victories and trying to build on something. I guess not that anyone's going to be complacent, but how do you keep working and grinding to take that next step with your program? Well, that's what we talk to them about. You know, we have exit meetings with all the players, not only the positional coaches, but myself, and I meet with each guy. So this year we had 88 guys on the team. That was pretty well known. So I met with all of them, and, you know, that's something that we talked about. We want to still come out and have that – build that bond and brotherhood that they had, the team chemistry that's so important. We want to go out there and have that chip on our shoulder where maybe we got a little disrespected uh, in preseason rankings and so on. And I say all the time, preseason rankings don't mean anything, but it seemed to motivate us this year. You know, uh, everyone predicted us to finish somewhere like ninth in the league. And, you know, our guys uh, – carried that chip on their shoulder throughout the season. So, you know, but we're not going to have that this year. You know, we have a lot of returners, and we're probably going to have, a, a you know, a better ranking and so on in the preseason. So our guys are going to have to continue to work with that edge and, uh, like you said, fight complacency and uh, don't be content with just making the playoffs. Let's see if we can build upon where we ended this year. As you mentioned, the previous two years, we struggled in some games due to injuries, so on and so forth. But then we at least finish on a high note with a victory over our rival, Delaware. Well, this year, you don't end on a victory. Yeah. When you're in the playoffs, unless you go all the way, you're ending on a loss. So I think that will help motivate our guys throughout the preseason, excuse me, throughout the offseason and then carry it into the summer training and preseason camp. Camp. Well, Coach, congratulations to you and your staff on a fine uh, recruiting season as you find 13 quality athletes and quality young men to take this program forward. We appreciate your time today. So that'll be all for the Villanova Signing Day show today. We appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Wish you all the best of luck, and we'll see the Cats in the spring when it comes to spring practice.